Hello, I'm Rowan, the creator of the Synthstrom Audible Deluge. I'm going to show you how it works. Um, primarily, Deluge is a piano roll style sequencer, which um, when you start it up and get a new song going, it shows you um, a blank track with um, time going horizontally and pitch going vertically. You can enter in some notes. And play them. So it plays along left to right, and you can edit those notes as much as you like as it plays. Now you're not limited to just eight different pitches either. You can scroll up and down as much as you like by turning this vertical knob. So you can have really a large working area. You can go all the way up, make some higher notes all the way up here, and the lower ones are still retained in memory. Notes can be of different length, they don't all have to just be 16th notes as we have here. So if I just get rid of some of these ones and show you how to make one long note, if you hold down the head where you want the note to start and then press where you want it to go to, it makes one extended long note for that entire time there. And the tail of the note is a slightly darker colour to show that that is one long note and not four short ones. Um, the Deluge comes with a variety of different synth presets. Um, you can flick through them just by turning this select knob here. I'll show you a few of the different ones. Now these two gold knobs here are the parameter knobs that affect sound parameters of the synth sound in this case. Uh, by default they control the cutoff and resonance of the low pass filter. And their function is set by uh, uh, these buttons along here, whichever one is lit is the current function. So this one being the cutoff and resonance one, we can change it to something else, like the delay time and amount. So now that we've got a synth track going, let's create a kit track to go along with it. If we jump out to song view, which is a different view to this track view that we've been in this entire time, in song view, the entire track is minimized down to just one row here, and we can go and create another track in any of these slots down here. So we just tap any pad on a new row to go into it and make a new track. By default, it's a synth track as well, but we can make it a kit track by pressing the kit button. It loads some drum samples off the SD card. Deluge comes with a range of different pre-made drum kits. This is just the basic 808 kit. Now each row corresponds to a different drum sound, so you can sequence a beat much like we did with the synth in the other track, which you can still hear playing in the background. Tempo can be controlled with the tempo knob here goes up in sort of standard metronome increments by default, or if you hold it down and turn it, you can do individual BPM changes. Swing is controlled with the same knob. If I get a few more 16th notes in there, you'll be able to hear this well. If you hold down shift and turn the tempo knob, swing amount is adjusted. swing back the other way as well. And 50 is the off amount, so it's the percentage of swing applied to the 16th notes. Or you can change it to apply it to a different time division, like 8th or 32nd notes. Now these pads over on the right here are the audition pads that let you hear a sound live as you play it. can be used as part of the performance instrument or while you're making a beat if you just want to hear a sound before you go and put some in your sequence. You can scroll vertically in kit mode as well so we're not limited to just these eight sounds that we have here. This, this kit actually contains a few more that are hiding off screen up here. If we scroll up we can have access to them. Put some of them in the sequence. Now 
show you horizontal zooming and scrolling. So we've been looking at 16th notes this whole time. You can be reminded of that by pressing down on the horizontal knob and it flashes 16th on the screen. If you turn the horizontal knob while holding it down, you zoom in to 32nd notes. So everything just extended this way, half the sequence is now off screen to the right. So we're just looking at a zoomed in version of the first half of the sequence that we just made. And we can go and make some 32nd notes if we want. Go in all the way to 64th if you, whoops, wrong knob, sorry. You can go in all the way to 64th notes if you really want to make a very fast repetitive sound. Zooming back out, you see that these pads have become a sort of milky color that indicates that there's detail hiding that you can't see at the current zoom level. So if those were 64th notes that we put in, now we're back at the 30 second note zoom level. So we can't see that detail. We can still delete it if we want and then just make those regular 30 second notes again. So now half our sequence is still hiding off to the right hand side of the display. You can scroll along to access it and tracks can be any length you want really. The, the, the limit is massive, you'll never reach it. Turning the horizontal knob without pressing it in remember pressing it in zooms, just turning it like this takes you along to the second half of the sequence and we can now go and do some finer detail in this one as well. A range of different um, kit uh, presets can be flipped through just by turning the select knob like we did for the synth presets. One sound or one row can be muted out with its mute pad, which is this green column over here. If you just press that, that was the kick drum I just muted out, and bring it back in. Velocity can be edited for individual notes as well. If I make, say, a few more snares over here, if we hold one down and turn this knob, the right hand two columns of pads become a velocity level indicator for that note. So you can sort of hear that, that second snare hit comes quieter. Velocity is patched to volume by default, but that can be changed. I'll show you how a little bit later on. I'll zoom back out and show you the triplets function. Triplets view is accessed with this button here. And when you go in there, what did occupy four columns of pads for each of the quarters of the display is squeezed down into just three and the fourth one becomes grayed out. So the time is divided now into threes instead of fours. So if I get rid of those snares that we had there, put in some new ones, they are now triplets in this new time division that's displaying. And you can jump back to back out of triplets view and they're still there, but you'll see their sort of milky, uh, milky color again. And uh, that's showing that there is detail that, again, you can't see in the current sort of zoom view mode because they're, they're triplet notes and we're back in non-triplets view. So you can jump back into triplets view if you want to see them properly, or they can just continue as existing while we're outside of triplets view. Track length can be edited as well. Track, can be, track length can be edited as well. Tracks can be as long as you like, basically holding down shift and pressing the horizontal knob is the easiest way to do this. It, it will double up or duplicate the current track that we have here and place the second copy of it after itself, zooming, zooming us out as it goes. So we've now got two halves, which are each what we had before, one after the other, so we can make some changes to save the second one. We can double that again, if you like. Zooming us out yet again, of course, we can zoom back in if we want to access things on a smaller level. We can go back to 16th notes, which we were at originally. So having duplicated this twice, we now are viewing just one quarter of the sequence. And we can scroll along to any of the other quarters that we'd like to see. Just some more sounds over here to indicate that it's different from the other ones. Now 
a handy feature for when you're editing a long track like this and looking at just one sort of bar of it is cross screen edit. So if you press the cross screen button, this mode is activated. Now any change you make will apply not just to this screen that we're looking at, but to all of the other, in this case three other screens which are in memory. So if we go and change say the, the snare pattern, it's gone and done that change to all of the screens, but otherwise it's left the screens different as they are. So making the track shorter again is done by holding down shift and turning the horizontal knob. You'll see the rows are sort of getting chopped off there to the right, uh, sorry columns. As soon as we get down to halfway it zooms us in so we're now back looking at eighth notes seeing the still kind of long sequence. Let's shorten it some more. Things can be left at irregular lengths zoomed us in there again to 16th notes. If we um, if we chop off, say, the last two 16th notes, the kit track is now just seven beats long, seven eighth notes long. But the synth track is still the whole, the whole bar long, and um, you can hear that they're now drifting out of phase with each other as they continue to play. Anyway, let's make that back to its original length for now. You can also record notes by going into record mode here. Now the audition pads on the right, anytime you play them, will um, place notes on the piano roll sequence. That one sounds crap actually, I'll get rid of those. What would be a better sound? Scroll up some more. It quantizes to the current zoom level, so if we were to zoom in even more, say the 30 second notes, I don't know if I can even hit them that fast. Kind of, kind of we get some 30 second notes there. Now let's jump back out into song view. You can see our two tracks there next to each other. There was the synth track that we made at first and there's the kit track below. Um, the colours are actually completely arbitrary. We can make the individual tracks any colour we want, um, which is handy because then you can tell them apart while you're in song view. Oops, I just realised I'm still in record view. I'll go to record mode, I'll jump out of that. Um, if we go back into the top track, which is that synth the bass line, um, I'll show you how to change the colour. If you hold down shift and turn this knob, you can cycle through the entire colour spe spectrum and make it any colour you like. So that then you jump back into song view remains that colour. Talk about scales. A number of default scales are included. You can access these by holding down shift and pressing the scale button here. It's gone from major to minor, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian and Locrian. You can also jump out of scale mode entirely if you just press the scale button without holding shift. And we're now seeing the individual semitones. You see those notes sort of moved up there. You can of course still scroll up if you want to see them. So you can now do some really weird stuff. When you jump back into scale mode, it automatically um, you see it flash the word other there. It uh, makes a scale including the, all of the notes which you have present. In this case, it's a really weird scale that obviously has no name. If we, um, if we had tried that while we had a sequence which, say, only had notes falling into a major scale, let's give that a try. Delete all, all of these notes. Just make something falling into, say, a major scale. Then if we jump into scale mode again, it correctly guesses that that was a major scale, guesses the root note as well, and we're back locked to a major scale again. I'm gonna show you keyboard mode now, which is a different view from the track sequence view that we've been dealing with so far. So if you press the 
keyboard button here. The entire grid of pads becomes a two-dimensional playable keyboard instrument. So pitch goes um, from left to right in semitones chromatically and going up it goes in fourths. So this is similar to a guitar fretboard in standard tuning except for that one interval on guitar fretboards that is a major third. Um, so you can, you can get your normal guitar sort of power chord formations and um, any, any uh, chord formation that you do will work anywhere around the two-dimensional area. So you can sort of reuse the same, the same pattern. So like a minor third, you can do, sorry, major third, you can do anywhere. You can scroll up and down if you want to go even higher up. And left and right too. You still have access to all the different sound uh, different, different presets and their parameters. You can also record from keyboard mode um, onto the track, which still exists in the background. If we say turn on the metronome so that we can hear, since there's no beat going anymore, go into record mode. Recording from left to right, if we jump back into keyboard mode, play some notes, jump back out of keyboard mode, and you can see the notes have been placed there on the sequence, and of course you can manually edit them again. I showed, I showed scales before. Yep, yep, yep. If you're wondering about the colors in keyboard mode, the root note of the current scale is highlighted most brightly, and the other notes of the current scale are highlighted more dimly. So, so long as you play notes that are highlighted, it's guaranteed to sound fairly good. You can change the scale preset in here, just like you could in track view as well. Shift scale, take us through some different ones. And if you just play those um, highlighted keys, you'll get that scale. I'm back in song view now with two different tracks. You can hear them. There's the bass line down the bottom there, red one, and a uh, basic beat up there. So these are two different tracks, each occupying their own row of pads. And I'll show you now, in song view, you can stop individual tracks by pressing the launch pad, which is this column here. So if we want to stop the beat, start it again, or the bass line. So it waits sort of until the next loop opportunity uh, for, for the actual launch to occur. So if I press it now, it's gonna wait until it gets to the end. And again, if I do it like that, you can also make it happen instantly if you hold down shift and press it. Now I'll show you how to clone a track, which is really easy. You just hold down any pad on it and then press one on the new row where you want the, tra the new track to go. So that's cloned our bass line there. Now you notice the new one is not playing, the old one still is. Um, let's go into the new one, which is not currently playing, and change some of those notes. Let's change all of those notes to make a completely different bass note. Now this track isn't playing right now, but if we jump back out into song view, we can choose to play that one instead of the original one. And go back to the old one. So because those two tracks have the same instrument, the same synth preset, I mean, because they were cloned from each other, um, only one of them will play at once. So anytime you switch to a different one, the old one stops. So this is handy because it allows you to create sort of different, uh, sort of change the, the bass line, for instance, occurring under a song, um, and you won't end up with two bass lines playing at once. Tracks can be reordered very easily. You just hold down on the one that you want to move, sort of hold it, and it will stay still as you scroll, basically. So I'm, I'm holding the red one still and scrolling the other tracks past it. 
and that's right you can scroll in track view as well so you're not actually limited to just eight different tracks you can scroll as far as you like it limits it so you don't get too far away from the current tracks but if I filled this up with tracks I could just continue scrolling down and the number of tracks that can exist is limited only by the RAM you could easily have hundreds if not thousands Deleting a track is easy as well. Uh, if I say go and make a new track, just put some random notes in there, jump back out to song view, that's the one down the bottom there, just hold down shift and press it to delete it. Now I'm going to show you song sections, um, which is a feature that allows you to quickly launch um, multiple tracks at once. So I've shown you switching between the two different bass lines which is one way to sort of do basic sections of a song. But let's get another synth part going. Back to song view, that new part's down there. I'm gonna clone it as well, make some variations to that clone. song view so we now have these two different variations on the green synth sort of lead part and two variations on the baseline the red part there now you'll see this rightmost column here um, the section column when we're in song view it's the audition column in track view the section column in song view um, the different colors here indicate the section that those tracks fall into so there's two different two different sections indicated here. There's the blue section and the purple section. Um, now, if I play, currently you'll see only the tracks in the blue section are playing, but if we press any of the purple pads, it will arm and then play all the purple pads. And we can switch back to blue again like I just did. And even when tracks belong to sections like this, you still can manually just launch one track like that, even if it's in a different section to the one that is currently sort of mostly playing. Now just like when you launch tracks individually, when you launch a new section, tracks which begin will cause any other track that was already playing that has the same synth or kit preset to stop playing. So when we switch again to the purple section, stopped these two which shared that bass preset and synth lead preset um, it left the kit track playing though because um, so that was that was in the blue section has the kit preset and it's still playing despite me having launched the purple section that's because there is no kit track in the purple section to sort of override that one and steal steal that sound so to speak if I go back to the blue section now I'll show you that if I had in fact wanted to launch the purple section exclusively so that it would stop anything from the blue section unconditionally, then you simply double tap it. And then we have just the purple section tracks playing and the kit was not a part of that so it stopped. The section of a track can be selected by holding down shift and pressing that section pad and it will change colour between all the different currently present section options plus one more. So there's there's the purple and the blue and then it gives us a third option which is sort of an orangey yellow one in this case. If we were to clone say this track again it gives us yet another option. I'll play that new track I just created which at the moment is the same as the one I cloned it from but if I go in there I'll show you another thing I touched on this before but again you can make um, different tracks any length that you like including sort of lengths that are different to all the other tracks that are playing can give you some opportunities to make some quite cool sort of variations as time goes on if I put some put a few more notes in here so you can hear this track looping up after a much shorter amount of time well a bit shorter than all the other tracks if we jump back to song you can see that these pads on the right here uh, grayed out to show that this track is actually shorter than the other ones and you can even see that it is playing at a different time if you follow those white flashes than the other tracks. So you get some really interesting sort of um, almost polyrhythms going on with, with multiple tracks playing with different lengths like that. Now you can 
save your song onto the SD card. So if you just hit save, it presents you with a new blank song slot. It's defaulted here to, uh, to slot 19. If you hit save a second time, you'll save into that slot. I should, I should point out it's, um, it's indicating that it's saving the song by flashing the song pad here, as opposed to saving the synth or the kit, which I'll touch on later. So if you press save a second time, it saves it into slot 19. If you go to save it a second time, maybe after you've made some more changes, it defaults to slot 19A, so it's actually giving you another sub-slot so that you can save multiple variations on each number without having to um, worry about, about the numbers getting too big. So if we save into slot 19A, next time we go back in it'll give us slot 19B, and so on and so forth. To load a song, uh, it's just the load button and defaults to the one that we already had. Um, there's various other ones in here. Uh, you get a preview of them as you flick through the different numbers and then you just press load again when you're on the one that you want to load, and it loads back up. To make a new song, hold down shift and press load, and new is the shift function on the load button. It asks you to confirm, press load a second time, and we've got a new blank song. Samples, as you saw before, live in a kit, so we're gonna make a, a brand new kit. To make a new kit, as opposed to just going to a default kit, you hold down shift while pressing the kit button. And it has created us a brand new kit. It's taken us straight into the file browser, which I'll show you now. You probably heard that drum sound just there. It's given us a preview of the drum sound um, that we are currently sitting on in the file browser. I think I'm still in the 808 folder, so it's just defaulted into the folder of whatever sample it loaded last. Um, you can scroll around effectively within the current folder by turning the select knob. So I'm scrolling through, I'm actually browsing WAV files sitting on the SD card. If you hit the back button, you jump out one folder level, so you, we, we were in the 808 folder, we can go down, go into any of the other folders we like. Say if I go into this one, which is um, some Roland drum samples, you tap down on the encoder to go in. We're now in here, scrolling through these samples. Let's load the kick and press down again. And if it is a WAV file, in fact, that we're on, it loads it and it is now accessible on this bottom row. So we can make a beat with it if we like. To load an additional sample, hold down the audition pad on an unoccupied row see that this row is unoccupied because its mute pad is not illuminated. Hold down the audition pad and press load. We go back into the file browser. We're in the same folder we were in before. And we can select a different file to load. Let's load that snare. effects and filters um, to individual samples. So we've just got our two samples there. Um, the currently selected sample is shown by having its audition pad illuminated. So the snare is currently selected, that's this one here. You can select a different one, it's just whichever one was auditioned most recently. So if we audition the kick, it becomes the selected one. If you want to select it silently, if you're in the middle of a performance and don't want to actually, actually audition the sound, you just hold down shift and press whatever one you want to select. So we'll select the snare for now. And now the gold knobs here will affect it. So we can apply a low pass filter to the snare. Some delay. You can also change the sample pitch, which is under custom one. Now I'll show you how to record your own samples, which you can do through the internal microphone here, or you can use an external microphone or line input. If you hold down a pad, uh, an audition pad on an unused row, and then if you press the record button, it will begin, it will begin recording immediately. And press it again to stop. And then that sample has been recorded onto that row immediately. Press it again to stop. And you can now affect it and sequence it along with the other samples. Um, 
if I do perhaps a slightly more percussive sound. Hey! Hey! You can now sequence that along with your other drum sounds there and I'll show you a little bit later on how to trim the beginning of that so it would actually play as hey. soon as I hit the pad. Now I showed you how to apply effects to individual samples or drums in this case. You can also apply effects to an entire drum kit. Um, I'll, get a, I'll get one of the more conventional um, drum kits loaded up. Um, go back to kit zero, which is the 808. Let's get some more hi-hats and that sort of thing going. Now this effect entire button here, if you press that it will affect the entire track. The effect entire button always applies to whichever thing is selected over here, so it can be either effect entire track or effect entire song if that was selected. Effect entire track, for now we can go and apply a low pass filter if we wanted to the entire track. All the samples together. The gold knobs, um, some of them have functions if you press down on them. Um, while we are on the cutoff and resonance um, function here, if you press down on this one, it switches it between a low pass filter and a high pass filter. Uh, if you press it again, it goes into an equalizer mode where these two knobs become bass, oh, sorry, treble and bass. Delay as well, we can apply some delay to the entire kit. And this is another one where the two, uh, the, the press down functions on the two knobs um, come into play. Uh, pressing down on this one switches it between ping pong mode and normal mode. So it's, the delay has just gone mono. If I press it again, it'll go back to the stereo ping pong mode. Pressing down on this one switches analog simulation on and off. That's pure digital delay there. show you the stutter function now as well. If we go to stutter here, this knob becomes the stutter time and pressing down on it stutters the sound. You can turn it while it's stuttering to get some cool effects as well. Custom two and three. Uh, sample rate reduction and bit crushing. And as I mentioned, you can also affect an entire song or all the output of all the tracks together. If I go back to song view, make a synth track, just make a basic bass line. Go back to song view. Now by default, when you're in song view, um, the gold knobs have no function until you do something like pressing down on a given track, holding it down, um, you then have access to that track's functions, sound functions by turning the gold knobs. So that's the low pass filter by default. But if we're not holding down on a track, the gold knob cease to have a function. But then if we jump into effect entire mode for the song, so it's effect entire song now, we can apply filters and other effects to the entire song, all the output of all the sounds together. <laughs> 